How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can easily cut out a subject from its background using Photoshop. This is the first part of a two-part tutorial. In the second part I'll be showing you how you can then take that cutout from Photoshop, bring it into After Effects and animate it into a really simple 2.5D animation. But for now all you're going to need is a working copy of Photoshop and a photograph which contains a subject and a background. Let's go. Okay, here's the shot that I've chosen to use for this cutout experiment because it's not a straightforward shot to cut out, right? There's the fur on the hood there, which might be a bit problematic. There's very fine hair, which is kind of out of focus, which might be problematic. So it's not, it's not as straightforward as just shooting against a white backdrop. And that's intentional because what I want to do is turn this into a 2.5D animation where it's an autumn shoot, so I want leaves to be falling, I want this background to slowly spin around behind her as if there was a camera sliding from left to right or from right to left. But to be able to do all of this, first I need to be able to cut her out of the photograph and then fill in behind her as if she wasn't ever there. And that way it's sort of a blank canvas and I can place her anywhere on the photograph and it won't look weird. So here's how I do this. I hit W on the keyboard and that should select your quick selection tool. If it doesn't, it's either the magic wand or the quick selection. You can scroll through those by holding shift and W. Now with the quick selection tool selected, you can come up here and choose select and mask. And now you just draw on the area that you want to keep, that you want to save, and the area that you want to not include, you can change how this is seen. So I have it so that it's an overlay with a red overlay. That way you really see quite clearly what's selected and what's not. But you can have marching ants, you can have it on black, you can have it on white, you can have it in layers, it's up to you. I just find the red is, is a really nice clear way of showing what's selected, what's not. Like her button there, for example. Now it's selected. So you just draw along selecting what you want to select and if for some reason you go off and you select something you didn't mean to select like there, you can either just go undo, so control or command Z, and that will undo the last drawing that you did, provided you've released your mouse button to do this. Or if you draw a little bit on there, for example, and you don't want this area, you can just hold Alt and it will turn this into a negative brush, a deselect brush if you want. You can make the brush bigger with your brackets as well, so that it's just a little bit easier for the software to know what you want to do. So holding Alt, I can remove some of that background there. Keeping the fur in there, I've got the coat, cool. I think all that fur is done and then there's some fine hairs up there which are which are also not being included. And that's pretty much the selection done, right? Now I need to refine that selection. So I'm gonna come down to the second brush here, which is Refine Edge Brush Tool, or just R. And this brush is basically going to really look at the pixels and try and decide what is keeping and what is going. Now this doesn't always work super well, which you're about to see with this fur here. It's gonna to struggle to differentiate what is fur and what's background. But the thing is, because the background is so out of focus, that's not exactly gonna matter. It's not gonna be a problem that Photoshop is keeping part of the background. And you'll see why once I've done this selection. But there's parts like the hair here sticking out, which I'm just gonna brush over because it would be nice to try and keep that in. And it does do a pretty amazing job, I must say, of, of differentiating what is to keep and what's to go. Now this is based on a very high resolution export from a RAW file. This is a JPEG, but there's still a lot of information in there. And the more information there is in the photograph, the easier Photoshop will be able to cut it out and to differentiate what's to keep and what's to go. Okay, and that's all I want to do to that. Next I'm going to come down all the way to the bottom where it says Output 2, and I'm going to output to a new layer with Layer Mask. That way when you hit OK, this is what you're actually getting. Now you can see there's some transparency issues there with the arms, and perhaps I shouldn't have refined the edge on the arms, but it's not the end of the world because that's easy to fill back in because, as I said, we're on a mask. So you can hit B to get your brush, make your brush a little bit bigger, make sure that it's white, and you can just draw back on the areas that have been removed. And if you need to, you can go right up close and just make sure that you're not drawing back on any of the background. 
Okay, so that's the selection process done. But now we bring this back in and if we hide this layer, this cutout layer, well, she's still in the background. What do we do about that? This is the part where Photoshop really shows just how powerful it is. If you select the mask and hit Control or Command and click, it's gonna select that mask, the white part of that mask. So it's gonna create a selection of that. If you then click on the background layer, come up to Select, Modify, Expand, and just expand your selection by 15 or 20 pixels. It's actually gonna expand that selection so that it's just beyond the selection that's in this mask. Then if you come up to Edit and select Fill, here you can choose Content Aware. Color Adaptation, yes. Blending Mode, normal, 100. That's everything you want. Just hit OK and let Photoshop work its magic. All right, and now if you deselect, that's pretty much perfect. You can see a little bit of the outline there. So you know what, let's just go back to where we expanded, before we expanded, and just try and expand that a little bit further. So let's do maybe 50 pixels. And now try the fill again. Okay, now if I deselect, yeah, that's way better. You've got a tiny bit there, but that is super simple to get rid of now. If you hit J on your keyboard, or you come up to the patch tool there, it's just a question of circling areas that you want to get rid of, and just drag them aside. And it will patch those up and get rid of them as if they were never there. Okay, and if we come in a bit closer, just have a look around, see if there's any mistakes still. I don't see any, to be honest. It looks, uh, it looks pretty good. And now if we bring her back into the frame, boom. We can move her around and it doesn't look weird. It just fits really nicely. The hair is even through there. It's showing, it's, it's perfect. It's such a good cutout and it's so easy to do. And now when I choose to animate this, it's gonna look really nice because she's gonna be able to move independent of the background. So I'm gonna change this layer name to subject and I'm gonna keep that layer name as background. And I'm just gonna save this as a PSD file. That way I can just import that into After Effects and start playing with the individual layers. All right, I hope you found this useful, educational, informative. Give this a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Hit that subscribe button to get more videos from me at DoD Media. Hit that little bell so you get notified when I do release a new video. Leave a comment in the comment section if you have any questions about this, or if you use a different method for cutting out subjects from the background in Photoshop. Next week I'll be showing you how you can take this cutout, bring it into After Effects, and start animating it so you get this 2.5D parallax effect. All right, see you next week.